Hello YouTube, so I just have some thoughts about a radon fan selection process and also I have some thoughts about why it would be important to build your home in a way that doesn't allow radon to get in your house in the first place. So um, I'm having to do radiation or radon remediation work on my house. The um, My home was built in the year 2007, it's not that old of a home um, and there's not very high levels of radon. The radon level on average has been about four, uh, which anything above three and a half, they recommend you do something about. So ours isn't that high. I've heard of homes having levels as high as 20 or 40, which is really high and equivalent to smoking cigarettes. So uh, radon is the leading cause of lung cancer for people who don't smoke. And radon kills more people than drowning deaths or more people than house fires. Uh, radon is a, a very significant cause of lung cancer. Um, can make it more likely for people to get lung cancer and those who do smoke and people who don't smoke, it's a it's the leading cause of lung cancer is is radon. So radon is a, a radioactive gas that you can't smell or taste or see that seeps into your house underneath it because there's natural levels of uranium and radon that uh, decay into radioactive radon that gets into your house. So anyway, <clears throat> my video today is about how to select a radon fan. Now this fan right here, this RN4EC4 radon fan, has a variable speed to it, which means you can adjust the strength of the fan, which the nice thing about that is you can control your electricity costs over time. If, if, you, if you don't hire a professional that can measure exactly the size of fan that you need, then this one might make sense for you uh, to get a powerful fan. This one can get quite strong, which is 555 CFMs, which is a really strong fan, uh, but it's an expensive fan. It's three hundred and fifty dollars, which is pretty pricey. The, the benefit of this fan is you can adjust the speed on it so that um, with an adjustable speed, you can get it clear up to five hundred fifty-five. But you can also dial it down to save electricity if you don't need that strong of a fan. There's disadvantages of having a really strong radon fan. You don't just want to buy the strongest possible radon fan you can buy because. Not only will it cost more in electricity, but it can also suck uh, air out of your home, like air conditioned, like the air that's cooled in the summer and heated in the winter to keep you comfortable can be sucked out of the home if you have a really strong fan and increase your energy costs as well as increase your electricity costs for running the fan itself. And I also read on a website where a really strong fan can create a backdraft because oftentimes these fans in the, in the uh, the pipe that goes into the foundation is close to where a hot water heater is that runs on natural gas or or a natural gas furnace. You can, you can create backdrafts where you can cause problems with carbon monoxide if it's too strong of a fan. I found this interesting website. Uh, it's wpd-radon.com. I think it's a radon contractor and he has lots of really interesting information and graphs about different radon fans, which was helpful in deciding what kind of radon fan to get. Now right here, <clears throat> he's got the the average yearly cost of running different radon fans. So this is the weakest, lowest voltage radon, radon fan is the FR100, which is an inexpensive fan. It's only about $100 to buy the fan. It's kind of a weak fan, so it only works if you in certain circumstances, which I'll go into later, but this one only costs, it costs $20 per year to run or over the 10 year lifetime of the fan, it costs about $231 to run in electricity. And as you go down, there's lots more fans that are much more strong, more powerful, like this Eagle fan will cost you $1,700 over the 10 year lifespan to run the fan. So there's, a, there's an energy penalty cost for buying a fan that's too strong for your needs. There's even stronger ones, like these super strong fans will cost you $6,600 per year, or per 10 year period or about six to $700 per year in electricity cost to run this fan. So you don't wanna just buy the biggest, strongest fan you can, you can afford to put in there because you're gonna pay a price in terms of electricity. Um, and also you can create dangerous backdraft situations if, this, if the fan is too strong, than, more, way too strong than it should be. So usually it's ideal to have a professional look at your home and they can help you determine the size of fan you need because uh, they, they drill into different spots around the foundation and find where the, the pressure field extension is going to make sure that the entire 
underside of your house is having the radon sucked away from it. So that's the ideal thing to do. If you don't have a professional that you're hiring, if you're doing this yourself, like me, I've been doing this myself and I don't have the expensive um, techniques and I don't have the expensive equipment that they have to measure the pressure field extension. So what I'm doing is I'm just basing it off of a simple calculation as my home is less than 2,200 square feet. And after I drilled underneath the foundation, I found that my home has gravel underneath the foundation. And then I also, uh, my, my red on level in my house is not that high to begin with. It's only at like a level five or uh, sometimes it peaks. My red on can get up to level 15 or 16 at the highest and then it drops back down. And on average, it's been about a level of four over the whole year, or maybe sometimes as high as five or six average for different months of the year, depending on what month it is. So it tends to be higher in the winter at my house. Um, <clears throat> so there's so the reason I bring up this energy cost thing is if you're building a home, for those of you who are building a home, then I would seriously strongly consider doing things while you build the home to prevent radon from getting in in the first place. There's several things you can do uh, to prevent radon from getting in your home in the first place. And I'll talk about that in a different video. Uh, but it would save you all this energy cost because you wouldn't have to run a fan at all if you can prevent the radon from getting in in the first place. So you'd save the money of buying. I have to, I probably spent about $500 when I'm done with this project. I'll probably, maybe a little bit less, maybe $400 to buy the radon fan and buy the equipment and buy the stuff that I've done to do the radon project. It probably cost me $500. But then the ongoing cost, I bought the, uh, Maverick, you can see this Maverick fan right here. So it's going to cost me about $800 over 10 years to run the fan with electricity costs. So that $800 cost wouldn't be there every 10 years if I, if whoever built this home had done it in a way that prevents radon from getting in the house. So that's why it's so important when you're building a new home to build it in a way that prevents the radon from getting in. And there's things you can do I'll talk about in another video. But I just want to talk about a couple different fans here. This is the adjustable fan that, um, like I was talking about, you can adjust the power of the fan so you don't get it too strong, and that would save you some electricity in the long run. But it also has the capacity to get up really, to really strong fan if you need to dial it up to get all the radon out. So this might be a good option for those of you who don't have the equipment or ability to test your home to find out how big the pressure field extension needs to be, or you want to dial in uh, the strength of the fan. Um, I'm kind of gambling with mine. I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but I'm going to use this AMG Maverick fan. That's, it was just $150 on Amazon. Uh, I bought it last night. It's going to come in the mail in a few days. But this one is a, is a mid-range fan. It's not the weakest fan, but it's also not a, not a super strong one either. As you look on the list here of the amount of electricity that the uh, fans use, the Maverick kind of falls in the middle, and then there's some that are way more powerful, and but also way more expensive to run on the electricity uh, usage front. So um, with me, my home had a gravel underneath it, and it uh, this, the, the square footage of the basement is less than 2,000 square feet, so you can get away with a smaller fan if you have a smaller footprint of a home uh, the, or the amount of square footage that touches the ground. And then also if you have gravel underneath your foundation, then you can get away with a weaker fan, which will save you electricity and also save you in the purchase price. The more, the more powerful fans are more expensive, but not necessarily that much more expensive. So this is a strong fan. This AMG Eagle Extreme is a very powerful fan, but it's only $267, but it is a significant price difference. It's maybe a hundred dollars more, but then there's this other really strong one for $500. So there's, there's some fans that the price difference isn't that much between the weak fan and the ones that are similar in, in strength, but as you get up to the really strong fans, they can be quite a bit more expensive. And especially the ones that are adjustable, uh, that, uh, that you can adjust the strength, those ones are quite a bit more expensive at $350 for this uh, adjustable fan. So this is a good option for those of you who don't have the ability to test your pressure field extension is you could get an adjustable fan like this that allows you to dial the strength uh, a friend of mine suggested, he said, well, why, would, why don't you just get a fan and then put like a dimmer switch on it so you can adjust the power that gets to the fan. And I read about that and you don't want to do that because that can become a fire hazard. If you have a fan that's running not at its optimal uh, wattage or, or power, then it can 
cause problems the fan can 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 break and or damage you get damaged or not run properly or even have slightly have a the risk of a fire because even with ceiling fans in a home you're not supposed to have ceiling fans on a dimmer switch either you can't you're not supposed to dial in the strength of a fan it's not good for fan motors to have a weak amount of strength that has to have it has to be a fan that's designed for that amount of power getting to it um that's why this adjustable fan is expensive because it's an adjustable fan that has a type of fan motor that can be adjusted which with how much wattage or, or strength is going to it so i opted to get just a less expensive fan to save the money money's a little bit tight for us right now that's why i'm doing the radon remediation myself because it will save me about a thousand dollars in labor cost and i have to pay a professional um, and then i'm also decided to get this less expensive uh, AMG Maverick fan based on the the gravel that's underneath my home and the smaller footprint that I have I I'm fairly confident that this will work and be adequate I was even debating about getting a, a weaker fan than this the spirit this um, this AMG spirit one is similar in price it's only $142 so this um, the Spirit fan is, is less, slightly less expensive, but the, the energy use is significantly less expensive. So if you look at the energy chart here, the Spirit is right here, and it only uses $300 over a 10-year lifespan versus $800. So it'd be a $500 savings over 10 years with the Spirit versus the Maverick. As you can see on the Maverick there, it uses about $800 per 10 years, and the Spirit uses about $300 per 10 years. So I was debating about getting an even weaker fan but since I don't know how well it will work, and, and if I need a more pressure field extension, I decided to get one that's slightly more powerful than Maverick, but still on the, the lower end of, of strengths of fans to save electricity. So that's something you have to consider when you're looking into getting a radon fan is you don't want to get one that's too powerful, but you also don't want to get one that's not powerful enough. It has to be just, it's kind of, it just needs to be just right. You have to have the right strength a fan that will suck out all the radon so that you don't have that poisonous gas hurting your family, but you also don't want it so powerful that it's gonna create a huge energy bill and also so it's not going to create backdrafts problems of airflow in your house. So anyway, those are my thoughts about choosing a radon fan. It's kind of a complicated thing to figure out. Uh, there's lots of things you can research online and the very best thing to do is hire a professional that is is certified and knows exactly how to choose a radon fan and, and you can quiz them say how do you choose a radon fan and and they'll say oh your size of your house but make sure they're doing tests where they, they drill little pilot holes throughout your basement in different locations to make sure that the pressure field extension extends all the way to the perimeter of your basement and that way you can know that for sure they've chosen a radon fan that is sufficient because it sucks air from from every corner of your basement from the one suction point so if you're not going to hire a professional though and you're not sure about how big of a pressure field extension or how strong of a fan you need then this adjustable one might be a good option this was one i was also considering buying but i decided to not spend the extra money and i think i'll let you know i'll give you an update when i install my fan about how well it's working and if if i made the right choice or if i should have bought this adjustable one or uh, if i should have hired a professional which is always a good option if you don't know always a good option to hire a professional that is is really skilled at what they do um but I've done enough research and I spent lots of time figuring this out and I'm confident that mine will work. So anyway, I hope this helps and I'll have another video that I'll talk about things you can do to prevent radon from getting in your home um, when you build the home in the first place. But in my case, I can't do that. So I'm buying a fan and I'll have to just pay the $800 per 10 years or about 50 to $70 per year to, to run my fan. Thanks for watching.